Hi, it's Bridget. Welcome to Above Life Channel. The purpose here is always to inspire your spirit and to fill you with hope today. We have a You Choose the Channel from one of the viewers. All right, you guys. So today we're going to be talking to David Cassidy and we're going to start with questions from Karen. And let's just see, where's Karen from? Oh, she is from Texas. Hi, Karen, howdy from Texas. Well, that was kind of stereotypical, I guess. Well, hi, how are ya? <laughs> That's what we usually say in Minnesota. How you doing? <laughs> All right, okay, so thank you for your comments. Here we go, let's interview with David Cassidy. As many of you will be familiar with this heartthrob, connected to the Partridge family, among other things, gifted in singing and was also in acting. All right, so here is the comments from Karen. She says, my request is David Cassidy. He passed away just over two years ago. David rocketed to superstardom in the early 70s in the Partridge family and he was my first crush. She says, as a young girl at the end of his life, he told his family, that he was estranged from. So much wasted time. I would like to know what regrets he had at his passing and if he is at peace now in the afterlife. She also has a few more questions. So let's see if we can connect with David Cassidy. All right. Are you gonna come in? Oh, <laughs> so he has a cowboy hat on. <laughs> A leather belt with a big buckle. He's teasing me because I actually, in my mind, just before I introduced him, I thought, oh, was my intro too cheesy? Maybe I should redo this video. No, 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 we're gonna keep rolling. He says, no, no, keep rolling, keep rolling. So he kind of comes in. He's kind of funny, he's got a good sense of humor. He's kind of thin, he's a little bit broader on the shoulders than I thought he would be. Um, but he seems kind of thin, like his arms seem long and such. Um, I don't know if that makes sense to you guys, but that's what I see. And then I do see like a, a shirt tucked into pants with a leather belt and a buckle on it. And then the shirt is like a 70s kind of thing. It's like a kind of an ivory color with like some orange, some faded peach and orange, kind of like almost like a flowers or something like that. It's hard to tell what exactly it is, but it's a guy's shirt, but it's like kind of, you know, I guess it's probably cool. It's probably hip at that time. So, all right. And then he takes off the hat and he's like trying to like fix his hair all nice and everything. Yeah, okay, so David, I, I know who you are. I don't remember a lot about you aside from what's already been said. Um, and I don't know exactly, I don't know how you passed over into the afterlife. It, um, he's pointing to his liver. <clears throat> So were you a big drinker? Was there drugs and alcohol? There's definitely a lot of like, it feels like alcohol. Um, but he says there was a lot of, um, there was a lot of wildness. He said a lot of wildness, a lot of wildness in the wilderness, a lot of wildness, he says. Um, he looks young, like back from his days um, in TV kind of, he shows me going through a really tough time like after the Partridge family. And he shows me being on some kind of like a comeback kind of a show or a tour, like with other artists kind of a thing, almost like if there were a bunch of different, some different movie, um, not movie stars, but different stars, you know, um, that were also like singers and such that they would, I don't understand what this is. Is this a particular tour or something specific you're trying to show me? It's almost like a comeback thing, kind of. I don't know how to describe this. Um, <clears throat> but it's post Partridge Family and it looks like it's the 80s. In like the early 80s. No, there's two times when there was some kind of an attempt to rejuvenate career stuff and it was related to music and it was either a tour and then there was also like a comeback thing. So very specifically, it says comeback thing. There was something like 1982 is significant for something related to David Cassidy's career, it feels like. And then the later 80s, like 1989, feels like a, he may have had a, um, either a, a child was born or there was some kind of a shift in family dynamic in 1989. It looks like there may have been like a marriage, a breakup or a child born, um, something like that. And then, yeah, 89, 90, and then 91 too. That was like three years of difficulty of, 
um, trying to figure things out, he says. Not difficult yet. I don't want to use that word necessarily, but trying to figure things out. Also looks like he may have been in trouble with the law. Like I see car accidents or car stuff. So I don't know if he drove drunk or what the deal is, but that's what it feels like. I'm not feeling the like drugs as much as I'm feeling alcohol, but I do see pills. So like uppers and that kind of thing. And then he says speed. And you know, there's a lot of things you do in like at the at parties. He said, it was just normal. It was just, it was just normal. He says, I know that's not an excuse, but it was just normal. It was normal. It's like, that's how it was in the time. And he's showing me like Hollywood and like the deserts in California. So um, someplace outside of Hollywood in the desert area. Um, and I don't know if that's where they filmed or if that's some place where he lived, like he lived outside of that area. I'm not sure, but there's like the desert, desert area in California. So it's show, showing me. Um, he's talking about his mom and he says he has a sister and um, he talks about people trying to save me. People kept trying to save me. He says, he says in... Um, And he's talking about like being an addict, but I don't feel like it's drugs. I feel like it's alcohol, like like needing to um, recover, be in recovery. And I feel like he maybe have has been through some stints in treatment. He's like three times. He says three. Um, and he says he lost uh, some good friends to addiction and mental illness. He said, you know, the reason why he says, you know, the reason why people get addicted to substances, whether it's, you know, medication, drugs, alcohol, wh whatever is your choice. The reason why people get addicted is because they have pain. It's good because they have pain and that's connected to mental health, which it's nice that finally that's being talked about. That's being talked about. And there are many times when I should have been dead and where I had you might think I had attempted suicide, but I didn't intentionally attempt suicide. But in a way, I kind of did. I kind of, um, I will admit to having those kinds of thoughts, like I don't care if I'm alive or dead. It really doesn't matter anymore. But I didn't ever try to cause my death. I wanna be clear on that. I almost got shot once, he's saying. I was in the wrong place at the wrong time and I almost got shot once. I almost got shot. Can you believe that? Like there, I did have some legal problems, he's saying. I did have some legal problems. So um, one of the things that Karen, a, a fan of yours, ha has uh, what would like for me to ask you is um, she'd like to know if you had regrets or what regrets you had at your passing, at your death, and if you're at peace now. Whew, he says, feels like a long time ago. He says, all I have is peace. That's all I have. That's all you really have. You know, it's just an extension of love. And that might sound kind of corny, <laughs> but it's, it's true when you let go and embrace what you are, what we all are, which is just pure loving energy is the word I'm gonna use, but he says loving nature is what he says. Our loving nature is what he says, but I say energy, loving energy. There's nothing really else. I always wanted peace, you know. I, I feel like I was always running and I was trying to get someplace fast, but I ended up getting nowhere fast is what it felt like all the time, you know. I'd start something, something would start up and it would feel real good for a while and then it just, it would just go south and it felt like I didn't have very good luck, you know. I was hoping my luck would change eventually, but I, I just didn't seem to be able to uh, maintain that. The pace you know that was needed I guess I regrets I not taking opportunities seriously when they were there I had opportunities that I just blew just threw it away you know and not not to say I, I should have made different choices for my career because that's not something I don't regret the Partridge family I don't regret he's showing me some other little like small parts on things and he shows me some kind of movie and then he shows me music um, did you have a preference to music and or movie or television I'm gonna ask that question did you have a preference of something that you'd want to do he said the music was a real part of my heart it's just a part of me the music was just a part of me but 
in those days there was so much else and I sort of became a heartthrob you would say and and it didn't really it's almost like I didn't have any I didn't have any control over my career after that it felt like you know I had to kind of go where I was being kind of carried I think uh, if I had to I would say I regretted opportunities I didn't maybe take things quite as seriously or I didn't see them for um, for the good that they could have given me. I think I wanted more too much too fast. I expected too much too fast. And when I got an opportunity that would have now looking back as a stepping stone would have been a great thing to do. I was like, you know, kind of blew it off and was kind of insulted. And the stuff that I did do, I didn't take seriously anyway. I just kind of felt like, oh, well, you know, because I felt like I was doing what other people wanted me to do and not really what I wanted to do. And so I thought, well, fine, if I'm going to have to do this and I don't want to do it anyway, they're just going to have to wait for me or they're going to have to pay me more. So I didn't, the opportunities, you know, I would say that. And I know I caused my family a lot of pain. Well, what did you do that caused your family so much pain? Because she talks about you being estranged from your family says, you know, you, people can only take so much and I don't blame them. I'm not angry at them at all. There's a lot of fights around money in every family and in every, <laughs> in every industry, no matter what your job is. <laughs> There's a lot of fight around that. Most of it, I think, was my health and my uh, lack of ability to see how bad uh, my body really was and the pain that I caused my family you know I could be a real jerk and uh, stubborn and he's using a different word that begins with an A but I'm not going to share that because YouTube friendly <laughs> I could be a real fill in the blank friends <laughs> all right Okay, let's go on to the next question. Um, it seems, it seems to, it seems you had, okay, I'm going to read, just read what she said, you guys, because I have the, I'm trying to read this here, it's a little tricky. Okay, so it seems you had very deep scars left by your father. Ah, that's interesting, because when you mentioned your mother, I could see a dad, but he was way in the back, so I couldn't tell if he was not involved or if it was a divorce situation. Interesting. You guys, I didn't read this beforehand. I just went to the, the video for who to channel and I just picked somebody to channel that's what I did actually you know what I should have shown that maybe I'll show that in the next video when I do it all right so it seems that you had very deep scars left by your father Jack Cassidy who died tragically in the mid 70s ah okay um so Karen would like to know if you've reconnected with your father in the afterlife and what was it like he says ah. he says that's a big question, isn't it? That's the big question. I suppose I should get this one correct so that people aren't, uh, there's, you know, there's a popular answer to this one, he says. There's a popular answer. There's a supposed to answer that we're supposed to answer this one. But I am going to tell you that it's not what you think. We have connected. But it's not like the two of us sat down and had conversation. It doesn't work like that. When, when you're here in a spirit energy without a body. <laughs> it's different. There's um, pure love and a lot of, he, I feel emotion, you guys, around David's heart. I can feel the emotion around David Cassidy's heart when he talks about his dad and connecting in the afterlife with him. And he's sharing that there was a lot of healing and forgiveness. And he says, David says, forgiveness came in so David had to forgive his dad is what it feels like and that's he said he said exactly and that's how I get peace that's how I get peace and so I choose love and that's what happens that's what happens that's what you can choose so it's not like we sat down and had a talk now I know that that might be a little disappointing to some of you but that's that's not that's not what happened that's not what happened for me okay thanks for sharing Mm. And we've heard different versions of this, so it's interesting to hear in the afterlife how it works for different folks. 
All right, so Karen would also like to know how connected you are with your family and your fans. Are you aware of the fan-funded tributes in the US and UK? And what are your thoughts about them? He says, I keep in touch with my family, as most do, through love. Again, he's like heart channel love. I, mean, I feel like he has a daughter and maybe a son. Um, there's a young girl or something that he's connected to. And then, uh, or I shouldn't say young girl, but oh, it could be a granddaughter. It might be a granddaughter. Does he have a granddaughter, you guys? Put that in the comments below. Because you're saying a young girl and then I feel like a son. So it could be the son's daughter or it could be like a goddaughter or granddaughter, but younger, she's younger. Okay. Um, unless you had somebody that died young, that could be. Okay. All right. All right. All right. I'm off track. Okay, David. So you connect with your family. Okay. All right. So, and what about your fans? He says they're, oh, he says fans, you know, he says, yeah, they're, they're pretty great. Some people are pretty great. Some are pretty crazy. Some are pretty crazy, he says, but some are pretty great, you know, pretty great people. As long as you're doing kindness, you're doing, you're doing good work and you're spreading kindness, then I guess, you know, I guess that's a good legacy. I didn't, I didn't set it up for that. I didn't, I certainly wasn't a poster boy for kindness and, and uh, I, I don't feel like I really had a, a much of a chance to make a big difference, but I, I suppose through the legacy of my fans, I, I do. And so in that way, I would support anything that they would do that would be loving and kind and, you know, make the world a better place, all that, that corny stuff. I would support that. And as long as people are coming together and having a good time and taking care of each other and, you know, if it, is, if it makes them feel good, then, you know, and it's healthy, then yeah, you know, how can you not be supportive of that? How can you not be for that? Yeah, I'm, pro, I'm pro that, he says. All right, so finally, she also wants to ask what you have learned in the afterlife that may help your family, friends, and fans here on Earth. Oh, so what have you learned in the afterlife? Hmm, he says, he's saying something about second chances, like there's not a second chance Something about not expecting second chances, not expecting the world to hand things to you, but instead to show up. To show up not like, hey, I'm here, the world revolves around me, but to show up and just be, you know, to just be and to be the best person that you can be. And I know that's hard. I know that what I say isn't easy. I, I know there their struggles. And that's the thing. See, that's the thing. People don't have to um, feel bad about themselves because they struggle. But it's natural. It's, it's normal. Like, will you tell them this? It's normal to struggle. It's normal. Like, he's like telling me, like, tell them this. It's normal to struggle. Yes, it is. And that's a unique word that you chose because that actually came up for me a couple of weeks ago in my own coaching session with my coach. So struggle, so thank you. It is normal to struggle. We're not about perfection, people. This is Bridget. It's not about perfection. It's okay to struggle. Thank you for saying that. That is like high five, awesome. Yeah, thank you, yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. It's okay to struggle. It's natural. That's what David's saying. David Cassidy in the afterlife. That's one of the biggest things, he says. It's not about second chances. You can't expect that. You got to show up and be. Got to be your best. And that doesn't mean you're not going to struggle because you are. And I know it's hard. He says, I know it's hard. But you can do it. But you got to choose that. You got to choose to be there in your life. You got to choose to be there. You got to choose to be there. And take advantage of those opportunities. You know, say yes and then be there and say no to stuff that doesn't fit you. Don't compromise that. If you know it's not a right situation for you and you just feel bad, so you just say yes, or you just need the money, so you just say yes, don't do that. You gotta trust, you gotta trust that something better is gonna come along that's gonna be better for you and everybody else involved because if you do things that your heart isn't in it, people can tell. It's like a lie. 
if your heart isn't in it, it's a lie. So re remember that. Dang, that's good stuff, David. That is really good. That is very good. Awesome. Now, I know others of you have also asked for me to channel David Cassidy in the afterlife. So I will take a look at some other questions that we have. And if there's enough interest and if I get more requests on the link, I'll put a link to the video where you put your questions in for David Cassidy or, or another person that you want me to channel. Um, then if there's enough interest, I'll channel David Cassidy again at some point in the future. So this particular video is channeled in January of 2020. It's actually January 21st of 2020. So thank you so much, Karen from Texas. Go ahead and send some of that warm, there's gotta be warmer air in Texas. Even if it's raining, I don't care. Send that over to me because it's below zero here today in Minnesota. David kind of laughs, he's like, oh, and then he puts sunglasses on. He's funny, he puts sunglasses on, he's like, yeah, in California, it's beautiful. Maybe you should go to California. I know, maybe I should. I would love that. I need somebody to sponsor me to do a trip there so I can go check out like the, the celebrity stuff, you know? That's what I need. <laughs> That'd be awesome. All right, all right, enough, enough. I'm just chatting with David Cassidy in the afterlife. No big deal. Totally normal for my psychic life. All right, so this is Bridget. Thank you so much for being here. Remember at Above Life Channel, the goal is to inspire your spirit, to fill you with hope because the point is, my friends, this is your life. This is your life. So live it. Just live it. Thanks for watching.